Hello and welcome back to the very first episode of Halloween Word Wednesday. I'm your host, Crypto Cat, and we have our other host, Indiana Jones. That's me, that's me. <laughs> so today's ever elusive and extra spooky word is quantitative easing. So first I will discuss... <laughs> the normalized definition and what this concept means in theory. And then I will hand the mic over to Bix and find out what is actually going on. So if we break down the word quantitative easing, so the definition that I found for quantitative easing is quantitative easing is a form of unconventional monetary policy in which a central bank purchases long-term securities from the open market in order to increase the money supply and encourage lending and investment. Buying these securities adds new money to the economy and also serves to lower interest rates by bidding up fixed income securities. It also expands the central bank's balance sheet. So essentially, we are taking money and pumping it into the economy and into the banks. So how does this work in theory? So to execute quantitative easing, central banks increase the supply of money by buying government bonds and other securities. Increasing the supply of money lowers the cost of money, the same effect as increasing the supply of any other asset in the market. A lower cost of money leads to lower interest rates. When interest rates are lower, banks can lend with easier terms. Quantitative easing is typically implemented when interest rates are approaching zero because at this point, central banks have fewer tools to influence economic growth. If you want to learn more about bonds and yields, be sure to watch our Word Wednesday on bonds. So Bix, what is really going on with quantitative easing and can you please shed some light on the Road to Ruta perspective? It's a fraud. It is complete fraud. Quantitative easing, it first came out it's obviously a bank bailout, but the question is, what are they really bailing out? The banks invest in toxic assets. Mortgage-backed securities, they'll bundle them up and sell them off, and the stuff that they still hold, they're all toxic, meaning they don't have the proper contracts, they don't have the proper anything. So what they figured out a way to do is sell it all to the central bank. They sell it all to the central bank, they don't have to worry about their toxic assets imploding. They're going to get top dollar. Central banks pay 100% for these assets that are, they should be trading about a tenth of what they're trading on the open market. But because the central bank will buy them, they get 100% of the value. It's a fraud. It's a scam like usual. <laughs> so I would assume there's some downsides of quantitative easing. So would one of those downsides be... Uh, devaluing the dollar? Does it devalue the dollar if we're pumping more money into the system? It, it does, but the, the central bank wouldn't do it, wouldn't really try to do it unless they wanted to devalue the dollar. So having a cheaper dollar is not necessarily a bad thing, depending on what your, your goal is. Um, one of the goals is to devalue the dollars to make our goods um, cheaper around the world. And you don't want a strong dollar, then nobody will buy our goods because they're so expensive. It's a game. Again, it's a con. But the biggest thing about quantitative easing, it's a, it's a backdoor bank bailout. But all it really does, it encourages bad behavior in structuring the original assets in the first place. So they just keep doing it over and over and over again. And we get the same crap that we have to deal with every 10 years with the banks crying that they are going out of business and we have to bail them out again. Yeah. So from 2008 until 2014, the U.S. Federal Reserve ran a quantitative easing program by increasing the money supply. And this had the effect of increasing the asset side of the Federal Reserve balance sheet as it purchased bonds, mortgages, and other assets. The Federal Reserve's liabilities primarily at U.S. banks grew by the same amount and stood at over $4 trillion by 2017. The goal of this program was for banks to lend and invest those reserves in order to stimulate over economic growth. So Bix, do you believe that the Federal Reserve's quantitative easing program helped rescue the U.S. economy in the 2008 financial crisis, or do you think it put us deeper into the financial crisis? It, it was a great way for them to kick the problem down the road, kick the can down the road, 
cover up the misdeeds of the banks, allow them to continue the same misdeeds today. They're doing the same thing that they did back then. And it's just, it, it's bought us more time, but it didn't fix any problem. The, the Fed balance sheet has continued to grow and grow and grow. They can't get rid of them because it would destroy the market almost instantly if they start selling these assets back into the market. So we are in a world of perpetual quantitative easing. Yeah. So on March 15th, 2020, the U.S. Federal Reserve announced its plan to implement up to $700 billion in asset purchases as an emergency measure to provide liquidity to the U.S. financial system. This decision was made as a result of massive economic and market turmoil brought on by the rapid spread of you-know-what and the ensuing economic shutdown. Subsequent actions have indefinitely expanded this QE or quantitative easing action. So Bix, what do you think the effects of this quantitative easing having to go on for the rest of forever? That's it, the rest of forever until we, until the system ends. And that's kind of where on the road to Ruta, that's the ultimate conclusion is they're gonna print, it's like being drunk at a party. You keep drinking and drinking and drinking until the punch runs out. Now the punch run, won't run out for the Federal Reserve. They can create money out of thin air. They can do this as long as they want. The problem lies in that it's gonna devalue the value of the base currency, which is the US dollar, ultimately destroying everything that we know and love and cherish in our country, especially free markets, because this is not free market action. This is the Fed creating money out of thin air to bail out banks because they make ridiculous mistakes and not even mistakes. They're criminal maneuvers of putting together toxic assets to sell to the U.S. Federal Reserve System. It is, it is going to destroy our country and everybody's going to not know who to blame. Well, you can blame the banks and the Federal Reserve for all this. Yeah. So is there anything else that you would like to tell people about quantitative easing? I would tell everybody the Fed will continue to create money out of thin air if they, if they start uh, handing out uh, debit cards, a lot of talk about that, digital assets. There's no difference between a digital asset and what the Fed creates today. It's all digital already. They will pump out as much money as possible because it's the only thing they know how to do. Interest rate rates will never go up. They cannot go up. It would, it would implode the system instantly. So we are at the point, the end game, where all asset prices are going to go up, 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 but the value of those assets are going to go down. And that's the sad part. That's why they have to rig the gold and silver markets, rig the crypto markets. Every market we have today has to be rigged because of the game that they're playing with quantitative easing and the bailout of the banks. Yeah. We've landed here again. The banks are evil and we need to end the game. <laughs> That's it. You got it. Exactly. So to wrap up for today, the politics of asset stabilization and quantitative easing rests on two important questions. First, are such efforts legal in the first place, for example, interfering with free markets? And second, does it open the door for central banks to claim emergency powers to gain undue control over monetary policy? Taking a step back, perhaps a bigger question than whether or not central banks should act to stabilize asset prices in order to avert a larger economic crisis is what happens when all the asset buying stops. Well, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of Word Wednesday. We hope you have a very fun and safe Halloween weekend, and we can't wait to see you next week. Take care. Happy Halloween. Bravo, band! Bravo, band! More wine. <laughs> More wine. More cowbell. This is a, it's called Hey Mr. Banker. It was written about uh, Jamie Dimon. And, um, and the criminality. The amazing thing about banks these days is you can go to J.B. Morgan, go across the street to the 7-Eleven. Somebody robs that store of 100 bucks, they get like six months in jail. Right across the street, they're robbing us for billions of dollars every day, and they get no jail time. They pay a fine, and the fine's a hell of a lot less than they make on those transactions. 
It is pathetic, it is sick, it is wrong. And I wrote this song called Hey Mr. Banker. I usually do it slow, but with the band, we're gonna go really fast. Snippy, like fast, fast. All right, ready? You play your dirty games, but you ain't fooling me. You're making money out of thin air, lend it to the people. The money never was there for posing all my sheep. It all falls apart if we are down on one knee. You demand a bailout and a get out of jail card free. Whoa, you're just a criminal in a fancy suit. Just a criminal stealing everyone's loot. You're just a criminal. You'll get yours one day when the people find out we're gonna lock, lock, lock you away. Hey, Mr. Banker, I see what you're doing. Your rigging market's high up, your rigging is a brewing. You tell us all it's different, it's gonna go on forever. Secretly, you're short thinking, you're so damn clever. You finally rig it down and watch everybody drown. You steal the real asses, get the heck, heck, heck out of town. Oh, you're just a criminal, in a fancy suit, just a criminal. I steal in everyone's loot, you're just a criminal. You'll be just one day when the people find out we're gonna lock, lock, lock you away. Thank you, Dick. Mr. Banker, I think you're in trouble The people are awake and we're arising from the rubble And don't you run and hide now, cause we are gonna find you Drag you in the town square, expose what you've been up to The justice will be swift, we're gonna lock you in a hole I'd hate to be you, gotta have mercy, mercy, mercy on your soul You're just a criminal, in a fancy suit Just a criminal, stealing everyone's loot just a criminal, and you'll get yours one day when the people find out they're gonna lock, lock, lock you away. Oh, you're just a criminal in a fancy suit, just a criminal, stealing everyone's loot. You're just a criminal, and you'll get yours one day when the people find out they're gonna lock, lock, lock you away. Just a criminal, Jamie Diamond.